The goal got good, but is it good enough? Well, let's take a look. My story with this camera had a bit of a bumpy beginning when I made a video talking about the specs that were leaked a few days before the camera was officially announced. Insta360 filed a copyright strike and got the video taken down, which disappointed me so much that I cancelled my plans to buy the camera on launch day to make a review. But then their marketing manager got in touch to explain that they were just trying to keep the specs quiet until launch day and they couldn't find a way to reach me, so they filed a strike. Fast forward three months and the strike has expired and they sent me a free camera for the trouble. And I appreciate that. I bought the original Go and fell in love with it immediately because of its tiny size and impressive stabilization. But I never ended up reviewing that camera for the same reason that I never ended up using footage from it in anything semi-serious. The video quality just wasn't good enough. The Go 2 promises to change that. And they've changed a lot more than just the video quality. In fact, it's the most dramatic upgrade between iterations that I've seen on a camera in years. To briefly summarize the main changes, the camera is quite a bit larger than before, but still tiny compared to pretty much any other action camera. The bigger size means better battery life, better cooling, and longer run times. Instead of 1 minute recording times and 5 minutes for FPV, we now have up to 15 minutes in video mode and 30 minutes in FPV mode. The button is now in the front instead of the back, and this works much better. There's a replaceable lens protector, which I'm really pleased to see because now I don't worry so much about dropping it. The internal storage has bumped from 8GB to 32 and the LED can now be turned off if you don't want to draw too much attention. The biggest change, and the one that makes this almost a different camera entirely, is the case. It no longer just protects and charges the camera, it's also a mini selfie stick for the vloggers out there, a mini tripod for tabletop hands-free shooting, it has a tripod socket, you know how much I love tripod sockets, I would get one installed on my forehead if I could. The best thing about the new case is that it's a wireless remote control with a tiny little bright OLED display and quite a powerful and perfectly intuitive user interface. It's this remote that totally transforms the usability of the Go 2. There's no more guessing. Have I pressed record or have I actually stopped the recording? Did I take a video or was it still in photo mode? Am I going to get home and find that half the footage I thought I'd recorded is actually missing? Those days are over because now the display tells you when you're recording, what mode you're in, and lets you change the settings without needing a phone. Speaking of phones, the new Go 2 has its own new app, but the camera still works fine without a phone and without the app. There's no forced registration like on DJI products. But to get the more advanced features, you'll want to connect it with the app, which now gives us a live video feed of what we're recording so we can actually frame our shots. And now we have full manual control of shutter speed, ISO and white balance, so you can finally tune the exposure and get more professional results. The app isn't perfect yet though. For me, it fails to connect to the camera about 10% of the time, but this might be more to do with the fact that I'm running it on my beloved 5-year-old iPhone SE. If you have a newer phone, you might not experience the same issue. The video quality has had a significant upgrade. It now records in up to 1440p instead of 1080, and the maximum bitrate has doubled to 80 bits per second. It doesn't look as good as a modern smartphone or one of the more recent GoPros, but it's a pretty significant improvement. Things in the foreground are pretty sharp and detailed, while things in the background are nowhere near as blocky and smudged as on the old camera. There are two video modes. Normal video mode produces ready-to-use files right out of the camera, but without the option to change the aspect ratio or switch from linear to ultra-wide after recording. Pro video mode captures everything the sensor sees, but you will have to export them through the software before they're usable, though you will have a lot more control over the final look this way. Dynamic range is really impressive here. It's hard to believe how much these small cameras have improved over the years. 
Here I'm pointing directly into the sun and yet the sky isn't blown out. My face is perfectly lit and the colors look true to life. It does slow motion at 1080p and 120 frames per second. And even at this high frame rate, we have stabilization. So you can get some pretty smooth slow-mo. For me, it's a dream come true that something the size of my thumb can do this. Now where's slow-mo girl when you need her? She normally shows up right at the beginning of golden hour when the sun is, ah, there she is. There's just one thing you need to keep in mind when recording in slow motion. The camera must be kept upright. I've tried holding it sideways and upside down and they both produce vertical video with the sides chopped off. This means you can't record slow-mo using the hat clip or mounted in this orientation on a drone. I hope that's something they can fix in a future update. It's still a tiny camera with a tiny sensor so low light is going to be a struggle for something like this but it actually does a pretty decent job. I was surprised. If you turn on noise reduction when exporting the files from Insta360's desktop software, it makes a pretty big difference. One way to really get the best out of low light scenes is to switch to manual exposure using the app. A camera like this isn't really designed for these kind of scenes, but it just shows you that if you work with it a bit, you can get some fairly clean results. Another new feature this time is HDR video. This is a pretty nice feature to have in certain scenes, especially when shooting into direct light sources. It looks pretty good most of the time, but I have occasionally noticed some weird stuff going on in the background. Another mode that's pretty cool is time lapse. It's really easy to use, and thanks to the wireless live preview, it's a lot easier to compose this shot. I haven't had any issues using this mode outdoors where there's plenty of air moving over the camera, but indoors was a bit more tricky. I haven't been able to record for longer than about 25 minutes before the camera overheats and turns off. An easy solution to this is to use a small fan. That keeps the air flowing over it and lets it record for longer. Stabilization is top notch, as we've come to expect from Insta360. Whether I'm walking, running, cycling, or chasing after my dog, the go-to just keeps the footage smooth. Photo quality is improved over the last model, but it's not a mode I really use much. I have other cameras for that. For me, the go-to is more about getting quick and easy video, but the photo mode is there if you want it, and because of its size and how fast it is to use, you can get some pretty interesting shots. To be honest, I almost never use the audio from any of my cameras, so I don't really care how the audio sounds on this, but it wouldn't be a complete review if I didn't record some samples. Alright, here's another audio test while walking. 
first of all with the camera pointed towards me. Audio test, here we go, audio test. All right, here's another audio test while walking. First of all with the camera pointed towards me. Audio test, here we go, audio test. And now with the camera pointed away from me. Audio test, let's do an audio test. While the camera itself did exceed my expectations to the point where it surprised me, the included accessories bundle left me just slightly disappointed. You get fewer mounting accessories in the box compared to the Go 1. The magnetic pendant is great, it's slim and light enough that I forget I'm wearing it and the magnets are really strong so no complaints with that. The clip is fantastic too, it can clip to a backpack strap, a baseball hat, clothing and the angle can be adjusted one click at a time. But this time around, you don't get one of these. I don't know how popular these were, but I used it quite a bit with the Go 1, and sadly, it doesn't work with the Go 2 because the magnets are differently positioned. And then there's this. This is the replacement for this. They both have adhesive bases, and they both have mini ball heads for adjusting the angle. But the new one loses the tripod socket, so I can't put it on a selfie stick to film low to the ground shots at the perfect angle. You might think, well, that's what the tripod socket on the case is for, and that is very useful for certain situations, but not for shots like this. If only this unscrewed and had a little tripod socket inside, just like the previous version, it would be so great. But the way it comes, it seems like a slight downgrade. However, there is an adapter on the website that's basically the same thing as the one that shipped with the old Go, but to get that, you'll have to spend an extra $20. If you don't want to do that, I've come up with three possible workarounds. The first is to carefully disconnect the ball and socket joint on the old one and pop it onto the new one. If you don't have the old one, you can use an adapter like this or this. They're pretty cheap on Amazon. And the third is my favorite, but slightly more risky. Check this out. I don't think it's meant to be used this way, but if you're not too rough with it, it actually stays on pretty well. You could even stick an elastic band around it just to make sure it doesn't fall off. The Go One was a brand new and innovative concept that had so much potential but it fell short on image quality. To see them take this idea to where it is now, which is leaps ahead of the original, in just a single iteration is really amazing. I bought another second iteration of a well-known pocket-sized camera and it felt like a halfway step, more like a 1.5. The Go 2 has so many upgrades and improvements that it feels like I skipped a generation and got the version 3. It really seems like they wanted to put everything into this that they could and it's still not much bigger than my AirPods. The video quality isn't 4K, and it's not even the best 2K out there, but it's usable, and it's a big improvement over the original. And it more than makes up for that with its tiny size. It's so small and so fast and easy to use that I keep it in my pocket everywhere I go, and so I can capture things I'd never capture otherwise. It lets me get first-person perspective shots with no effort or setup time, and I can get interesting or unusual shots that I can't get with my other cameras. So this one gets a big thumbs up from me. If you find this video useful or interesting, I'd appreciate a thumbs up from you. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you next time.